everybody. We're live at SeaWorld Orlando's Orca Encounter. The Shamu Show. And you guys are going to watch it with us. Yeah. So leave some comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, we're going to be quiet for the duration of the show so you can hear everything that's going on. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoy the show. It should be starting in just a moment. We're very excited to show you the Orca Encounter. Yeah, me too. Uh, this is the first time I've seen this at SeaWorld Orlando. I saw it in San Antonio when I had to visit her way early on in our park hopper ship. In our park hopper ship? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, not, not a huge crowd here today in uh, Shambu Stadium, but... We also did have, like, a lot of uh, thunderstorms in the area. Yeah, a lot of people cleared out. And so... We actually were able to get on Mako in about five minutes. Oh my goodness. We can't wait to tell that you guys about it. That so. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Well, I'm trying to see if... So this is new to us. Normally we kind of know when we go to Disney and stuff when exactly the show starts. Right. Um, well, right now the show is set to start at 5.30. It's 5.31. It's 5.31, so... Watch it, move you're late. It's not like 5.30 show start, 5.31 Orca in the air. Right. So we're trying... Basically they're just talking about how awesome... Orcas are right, right now. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll be getting going in just a second. I'm gonna flip this around so you guys can see a little bit of the preview video. And hope you enjoy. Leave some comments where you're watching from, and uh, let us know what you think. And we'll talk to you afterwards. really excited. Could be a boy too, I don't know. It's a boy apparently. <laughs> I haven't looked back. <laughs> Alright, enjoy the show guys. As you could hear all of the social distancing announcements before the show.
go. <laughs> Years old. 
Katina is also the matriarch or leader of our pod. Now here at SeaWorld, our trading techniques create a language between us and the whales. It's a language of learning through positive reinforcement, encouragement, commitment, and care. Through these techniques and our relationships, the whales learn to trust us. They even learn to take an active role in their own health and well-being. Now one of the first healthcare behaviors we train our animals is to offer a voluntary blood sample. As you can see, the whales are trained to roll ventral and present their tail flutes to their trainers. Not only does this give us a great look at the whale's entire body, but it also gives us access to the blood vessels which are easily seen on the white undersides of their tail flutes. Our veterinarians collect a blood sample at least once a month, and the whales are trained to remain calm and relaxed throughout the procedure. Now we're always rubbing down the whales, either on their backs, their flippers, and even sometimes their tail flukes. The whales have very sensitive skin, and this is just one way we can reward them for remaining calm throughout procedures like this. It's also a great way for us to strengthen our relationships with the whales. Now blood samples are just one way we can make sure the whales are staying healthy. Another important diagnostic is weighing the whales. And we are able to do that by simply asking the whales to slide their bodies up and out of the water onto a giant killer whale size scale that we have in one of our adjacent pools. As you can see, True and Makai are demonstrating that behavior right now. Now Makai over here is right around 3,800 pounds. However, big man on this side, Trua, is right around 6,000 pounds and still growing. You'll notice though that the portion of their bodies from their dorsal fins to their tail flukes is in the water right now. That is the powerhouse of the whale. It's called their peduncle. It's very muscular and very heavy. If we were to weigh a whale with their peduncle still in the water, we wouldn't be weighing the whole whale. But we're able to solve that problem by simply asking the whales to raise their tails up and out of the water. Training this posture enables us to ensure accuracy so that we know the younger whales are growing properly and that the older whales are maintaining a healthy weight. And the care isn't just visible. Mental stimulation and play are vital, and we surprise and invade our whales at every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt, and for the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. Making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales and for us. Hey everybody, I'm hanging out down here by the glass, and I have an important question for all you kids out there. Who likes to play? That kid does. I do too. And killer whales love to play. They actually learn a lot by playing. They also learn through things called mimicry and observational learning. From a very young age, killer whales learn important life skills by playing games like Ball the Leader with their mothers and other whales. And I think Trua and I would like to demonstrate that, put it to the test with you guys. What do you say? Yeah? Alright, so I'm going to have these first three rows right here. This group, that group, and that group. You guys all have your masks on carpet. What I want you to do is stand up for me. Now you guys are going to be the leaders, and we're going to see if Trua can follow you, alright? So when I say go, you're going to put both hands up all the way over your head and wave your hands just like that when I say go, alright? Okay, big man, Trua. Looks like you're just relaxing right there. Good job, buddy. Yeah? When you got to go, you got to go. All right, Cal. All right, group. You ready, team? All right. He's watching you guys. Go for it. Both hands up. Way over your head. And Drew's got it. Great job, everybody. As you can see, Drew is watching you very closely. So the whales are very curious animals, and we often see them jumping completely out of the water to get a better look around. And I think we can show that off, too, with a behavior called a bow. Now everybody's in on this one. When we see True do this big jump at stage, I want everybody to give him a great big cheer. Are you guys with me? All right, here we go. I'm gonna give him the signal. There it is. He's making his way down 40 feet. Everybody, everybody, watch over at stage as True comes up and out of the water. Pretty cool, right? That's all right. We got something for you guys over here too. As you 
can see Mimi's over here playing with Mikhail. Now, Mikhail's not quite as big as Trua, but he can cause a big splash. So we're going to do a behavior called a reach. Mimi, you've taught your team the signal. They're ready to go. Whenever you guys are ready, you're going to give Mikhail that signal for the reach. One, two, three. Go for it. Nice job, everybody. All right, now Mikhail's making his way around. Very well done. Killer Bill's reach sometimes to get a better look around. But more often, they do it to show off. Here comes Mikhail. Up. SeaWorld's research and observation of the killer whales in our care has shed light on many mysteries about these amazing animals. For example, we know that the gestation period of a pregnant killer whale is 17 months. That's information that would be impossible to gain in the wild. Some information, however, can only be gained through field research. That's why SeaWorld partners with such groups as the Norwegian Orca Survey and NOAA to advance global education. Killer whales are powerful animals, and perhaps the best expression of that power is when we've seen them hunt. Killer whales stand apart. They have no natural predators, and just about any other ocean animal could be their dinner. Depending on where they live and their chosen prey, they develop some epic hunting techniques. Off the coast of South America, killer whales will teach themselves. Riding in on waves just long enough to catch a break. They'll also create ways to knock animals like penguins and seals from ice cliffs. Most importantly, they will walk, communicate, and coordinate as a team. Here's footage of killer whales corralling a school of carrot. A whale dips in and feeds, while the other whales keep the fish together with spikes of their tail wings. So killer whales create waves when they hunt, and they use their tail hoops to stun their prey. You're about to see a demonstration. For our whales, it's a high-energy activity session. But for you, it means you're about to get wet. Poor people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> And they can eat several hundred pounds of 
food every day. In the wild, killer whale diets vary depending on where they live and time of year. Unfortunately, overfishing, pollution, and other factors are having a serious impact on some killer whale populations. Killer whales are impressive animals, and it's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right? Wrong.
please remain seated as we begin our safe exiting instructions. Now folks, how this is going to work, as you can see, we have several folks down front. If you guys could please remain seated. Perfect, thank you so much. Now, what's going to happen is, you'll see we have several of our operations staff ambassadors positioning themselves with colored flags. Now, if you guys follow directions, we got a special surprise coming because I think the whales have one more way they would like to say thanks for being here with us. So get ready. We got it again. Katina, Milani, and Malia. Hey, nice to die. Great job, everybody. Now, folks, you can see our operations staff is positioning themselves with colored flags. When they hold the flag up directly in front of your section and your section only, that is your indication to gather your belongings, make sure your face covering is on properly. Once they start waving the flag, that's your signal that you may exit. One row at a time, please. So we've got pink up top. We've got yellow, red, blue, white, and green. All right, so it's our turn to exit driving, first. Prime, prime seating. It'll also let you know which direction to, to exit, which stairwell to use, as well as which exit tunnel. I'll talk to you guys in the one second. for all this is so that we don't gather or create crowds on the stairwells or in the tunnels. So we appreciate your patience with this. I promise it's going to move through very quickly. But in the meantime, you have these three beautiful girls to take a look at. That's and cool. And enjoy while they're out here. I love a good one. All right. We'll flip this around here so we can say a few words. All right, Danny. Oh, hang on. Let me get up on the... I love that. That was a great time. I, uh... Man, those people got wet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to do that sometime when we're not on camera. See, the thing is, I grew up going to Shamu shows, and I've sat in the like in the splash zone more yeah. time than i more times than i can count sounds like it'd be a lot of fun it is it's just that the Very, water temperature when it's this hot outside it yeah. feels good but it's also a shock to the system it's cold salt water that gets splashed all over you and i will tell you <laughs> more times than i can count i've seen people hold their babies up like baby oh, God, simba why? baby simba in front of You're the trying splash to put them into shock or something and the babies look usually like this <laughs> My so, goodness. I mean, I feel, I feel like the adults do that too, but yeah. it's so much fun and the whales did such a great job. Um, we're trying to kind of learn how the show goes so we can better bring it to you guys. Have seen oh my the same yeah. <laughs> but overall that was a blast oh uh, yeah and here's the thing guys this is our first day um here at the parks together yep and we had a great time we're learning to deal with the heat it's um, only my second time at sea world look how happy i am <laughs> it's uh, these masks are great yep. we're wearing polyester masks at sea world um is selling if you're, if you're coming out they're doing buy three get one free right now so yeah. we each got two so we got that buy three, get one free deal. <laughs> um, and we're going to be coming here more often. We are going to be coming to, uni going to Universal. We're going to try to make our way to Busch Gardens. Yep. Um, and as Disney open, we have passes to Disney. Oh, yeah. We're going to be inside Disney very, very soon. Very soon. But we are excited to bring you um, SeaWorld again because it's so beautiful here. It's such a great time. And, you know, we, we know that you guys love it too. So... Um, you got anything else to add I don't before think so. we, we, we just, let these guys we go? We appreciate you guys tuning into all of our Facebook lives. Go back and watch earlier today. We were at the uh, the Dolphin Day show. Mm -hmm. Go check that out. Uh, we rode Mako. We're going to talk about that in our next oh my show. <laughs> we rode Manta, which mm -hmm. was awesome. So it was an awesome, awesome, awesome day at SeaWorld Orlando today. Can't wait to come back. Had a great time. People here are very, very nice. The staff does a really great job kind of... You know, letting people know what they have to do, you know, exiting shows, pulling up their masks, sanitizing. You know, I felt really safe here at SeaWorld today. Yeah, and it's funny because people have asked us, do you feel safe at the theme parks? I actually feel safer at the theme parks than, than I do in a lot of other places. anywhere else, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, keep an eye out. Um, tomorrow we will have an episode up about our first day together at SeaWorld Orlando. Yeah. And where you can find that episode anywhere you're going to listen to your podcast. You can also check it out on a couple of parkhoppers.com and feel free to leave us a comment. Let us know what else you want to see next time. And uh, I think that's going to be it. We're going to make our way back, go get some water. 
um, stay hydrated, and until next time, we'll see you around the parks.